This episode is made possible by Mozilla. Stay safe this holiday season by shopping Mozilla's Buyer's Guide for gadgets that respect your online privacy and security. For those of us born from the early 90s on, we've more or less always had the internet. Children born as far back as the year 2000 probably never had to visit a library to finish a book report or a project. Over 3.8 billion people around the world have access to the internet, and many people are beginning to consider this access to be a basic human right. As the internet has become more and more powerful and widespread, governments and organizations have adopted various techniques for keeping users safe, but in some cases, they've also implemented ways of keeping an eye on people, some even going so far as to suppress information or limit access to parts of the web. More and more often, we hear stories of large corporations or the government tracking our browsing habits, and people are beginning to wonder, just how free is the internet? Since very early in the days of the World Wide Web, governments have sought to implement certain restrictions on what can and cannot be accessed in their country or region, and many schools in the West often did the same, for different reasons. The extent of internet censorship varies by regime. Take China, for example. The famous Great Firewall is the Chinese government's attempt to restrict the population's ability to organize and protest, as well as suppress the spread of anti-government ideas. The Chinese people can't access Google, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, at least not easily, and have their own alternative social media platforms, all heavily patrolled by the government. In the past, the Chinese leadership was hesitant to acknowledge the extent of their censorship, but more recently they've begun proudly showing off their idea of internet sovereignty and tightening their grip on the web behind the Great Firewall. To the surprise of many in the West, this has not caused much public outcry among the Chinese population. In addition, Chinese business is booming. Almost 25% of the world's internet accessing population lives behind the Great Firewall, and yet China is the world leader in e-commerce, accounting for 40% of the global total. To many in the West, the Great Firewall seems like an incredibly oppressive and heavy-handed approach at keeping the peace, but the Chinese government sees the matter in a different light, as a means to allow for an economy connected to and competitive with the outside world, while maintaining a political culture closed off from Western ideas that might undermine the strength of the Communist Party. China's internet czar, Liu Wei, said, This path is the choice of history, and we walk the path ever more firmly and full of confidence. He goes on to say that China has struck the right balance between freedom and order, and between openness and autonomy. Most people would agree that places like the United States, France, Germany, Canada, and other Western countries represent the exact opposite of this heavily censored approach particularly the United States, given our obsession with freedom of speech. But just how free and open is our internet? Is there anything we can't say or access? And just how much do corporations and the government know about us? The United States is a bit of an oddball in terms of internet freedom. It's consistently ranked as among the top five most free countries in terms of censorship, but in 2014, the US was labeled an enemy of the internet by Paris-based NGO Reporters Without Borders, with such neighbors as China, North Korea, Russia, and Saudi Arabia. While the US doesn't really censor much content across the web, it is guilty of widespread surveillance of users' browsing habits and activity. In some ways, that might not be seen as such a bad thing. Such data gathering allows search engines to give you customized shopping results, showing you more of what you search for. Many people see this as convenient, but it also encourages more shopping, or allows you to form a little echo chamber within your search results. A slightly more intrusive and alarming example actually interfered with my research for another video. For the video in question, I wanted to use a clip of an ISIS recruitment video because I was talking about extremist groups and the threat they pose to the rest of the world. I searched YouTube and got nothing. Strange. Then I searched Google and still nothing. I tried a few more times, then was greeted with this page. Our systems have detected unusual traffic from your computer. Of course, this is nothing to be afraid of, but it does serve as a reminder that your browsing habits are being monitored. I was curious about why YouTube didn't return any relevant results for my search, so I did a little research. It turns out that recently YouTube has made it so that whenever someone searches for terrorist recruitment material or pro-ISIS propaganda, they're instead presented with the opposite, clearly anti-terrorist content, and often videos that make ISIS and other such groups appear disorganized or helpless. It's an interesting situation. On the one hand, this is a clear example of censorship. But on the other hand, it's only censoring content from a group that actually calls for the killing of innocent people. This is where things get tricky. As the world becomes more politically and ideologically polarized thanks to the internet, world governments and companies are faced with difficult decisions regarding censorship. During the latter half of 2016, Twitter suspended 377,000 accounts for promoting terrorism. 
In early 2017, Facebook, like YouTube, decided to employ a combination of artificial intelligence and human content flaggers in an attempt to find and remove extremist content. For YouTube, this reform was in response to the so-called adpocalypse, with advertisers leaving the site in droves because their ads would sometimes appear on hateful or extremist videos. This of course led to an overcorrection on the part of YouTube, as thousands of fairly tame videos were demonetized. Even some second thought videos were demonetized, including any videos that mention nuclear weapons or North Korea, and perhaps unsurprisingly, the video for which I needed the ISIS recruitment clip. The US isn't alone in censoring questionable content. In France and Germany, most Nazi-related and Holocaust denial websites are blocked. Communist symbols and imagery are censored in Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine, Latvia, Moldova, and Hungary. South Korea blocks pro-North Korean sites. Some Middle Eastern countries block sites related to the Muslim Brotherhood. The common thread between these instances of censorship is public approval. Most people don't protest such content being blocked or filtered because it is alarming or offensive to most of society. But what happens when less globally offensive sites start getting blocked, or certain sites are throttled? We may be about to find out. Since early 2017, the federal government of the United States seems to have been testing the waters in preparation for potential adjustments to internet freedom. On April 2nd, the president signed a bill that released internet service providers like AT&T and Verizon from having to protect consumer data. This move has put a huge amount of private information in jeopardy, and it looks like just the beginning. The Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, is attempting to weaken net neutrality rules, which would allow those same ISPs to create fast lanes for preferred internet traffic while throttling other traffic sources. Sources such as people planning a rally or anti-government demonstration, for example. Back in 2016, Freedom House ranked the US as having one of the freest webs in the world, but recent events have placed the US under the countries to watch list, marking a possible negative trajectory in internet freedom for 2017. And the US isn't alone. Of the 65 countries assessed in 2016, 34 have been on a negative trajectory since 2015. Other key findings from the Freedom House report detail that internet freedom around the world declined for the sixth year in a row. Social media users have begun to face unprecedented penalties, with authorities in 38 countries making arrests based on social media posts in the past year. Worldwide, governments are increasingly going after messaging apps like WhatsApp and Telegram, which allow for quick and secure spread of information. So while the United States and the West as a whole have been a bastion for internet freedom for many years, it's worth noting that we may be in for some unpleasant changes in the near future. If the current trend is as alarming to you as it is to me, do yourself a favor and check out Mozilla's new buyer's guide, Privacy Not Included. In a world where more and more products connect to the internet, from cars to dolls to salt shakers, there's a real risk of your sensitive information ending up somewhere it shouldn't. Mozilla has launched their new initiative to help people identify internet-connected products that meet their privacy and security needs. The Mozilla team reviewed dozens of popular toys, consoles, exercise gadgets, and smart home accessories ranging from $25 to $900, so there's something for every budget. The guide reviews products with important questions in mind. Questions like, does this product have privacy controls? Does the company share data with third parties? And does the company obey child-related privacy rules? The end result is an easy list of products with privacy and security features just as obvious as their price. If you want to send a message to the companies that make internet-connected devices and support Second Thought while you're at it, make sure to do your holiday gift shopping with the Mozilla Privacy Not Included Buyer's Guide. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to support the channel and stay up to date on the latest content. And click the little bell next to my channel name to join the notification squad. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or if you're done learning for the day, come watch me play games with a friend on my new gaming channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.